My view is, and I support the NUS on this, and I joined their demonstration back in September, October in the city, um, is that I think that the cap should stay in the next parliament. I, I think it's right that students do make a contribution, so I wouldn't abolish, but I think that the affordability issue is serious, and that's why I don't think it should go up in the next parliament. But I think there is, we've got to be sensible about this, because before Labour came to power, um, the higher education sector was really struggling in terms of funding. Something had to be done, and that was only part of the solution. But when funding has risen 25% in real terms, and I think that's made a real difference. But there's also a question about whether you want more students to be going into higher education. There's a real difference on this. I mean, Vince Cable famously has been saying, you know, we've got too many students. That's one of the things we can save money on and cut. I don't agree with that at all. I, for two reasons. The first being the social justice issue, because I think people, as many people as possible should be able to benefit from higher education, but also in terms of global competitiveness. If you look at what the other countries are doing, our competitors in the world, they are pouring out graduates, and those are going to be the, the jobs of the future and the, com the competitiveness of the future. So it's really important that we continue to invest in higher education. But the simple answer to your question is I would not support a rise in fees in the next parliament. I was one of the last people to be able to go to university and not pay fees and I, I was a student uh, when they first came in uh, and I was very active in the campaigns against them. I, I marched and I, I continued uh, to do what I could and I was very disappointed with a broken promise when Labour promised no fees and then decided to put them in anyway. Um, and I still think it's wrong. I think we shouldn't have uh, student fees. I would like to see them scrapped. Um, I think it is entirely wrong to lumber students with so much debt at the beginning of their lives. It means that they do not have the freedom to go on freely to do different occupations. They start off with massive debts. But it does mean that there are people who cannot afford to go to university. Um, I'm a director of studies at Clare College and I have students who come and see me about this. I have one at the moment who uh, is sadly fairly likely to have to drop out because she doesn't feel she can afford the level of debt that will be required for her to continue. Uh, and this is very, very sad. Uh, I'm trying to do something about that, but, but, but we'll have to see. I think it's right for people who have money, who are earning good incomes, um, who pay through general taxation to support higher education. So I think the whole country benefits immensely uh, from the education that people get. Um, so it shouldn't be the students. Um, given the economic state, it is very hard for us to scrap fees immediately. And so we would phase them out over six years. In the first year, we'd get rid of final year fees and then go through various stages, provide support for part-time students as well, until by the end, we'd have got rid of all of those fees. And the money would go straight to the university. So the university would actually end up slightly better off than they currently are, because we think quality of education um, also matters. <coughs> Just to come back on, on, on Daniel's uh, attack, and I seem to be under attack from all sides today, um, about this 50% target. I think a 50% target of people going to higher education is an arbitrary number. It's about the same as the number of people who get five or more A star to C grades at GCSE. And what I think it does wrong is it devalues further education and it devalues vocational education. And both of those are incredibly important. We should give people the right education for them. Uh, thank you. This, uh, this, I'm afraid, is one of those questions where Daniel and I tend to be closer uh, to the other candidates. And I think that's because uh, I'm afraid it is likely to be a Conservative or Labour government. I actually take exception to a lot of the things that Julian said. I mean, he talked... Uh, I too think Tony Blair's target of 50% of young people going to university is arbitrary. It was a figure plucked out of thin air. However, however, it was the right direction of travel. We already have more than half of young women going to university in Britain. And so under Julian's world, and Vince Cable's world, there would be fewer young women going to university uh, in the future than there is now. And that is a real problem. And it's a real problem because if you look at this year's UCAS figures, there are 200,000 more applications to university this year than there are places available. And I want to know if we don't have some form of copayment, and of course we would all love to say we'll get rid of tuition fees, but if we don't have some form of copayment, how are we going to help expand the number of universities? And Julian says it puts people from lower uh, income households uh, off. In fact, the figures, I'm afraid, simply do not stack up, and they do not stack up in other countries either. The number of people from poorer backgrounds, actually, I pay testament to the Labour Party on this, 
uh, at university has gone up. It's still nothing like high enough, but it has gone up. And the other reason why Julian is wrong, he says, look, only 50% of people get five GCSEs grades A to C, so therefore 50% target is wrong at university. And he then elides it into a point about vocational education. But people with vocational qualifications, non-GCSE, should also go to university. About half the students studying this country are doing professional qualifications, like nursing, like accountancy. These are vocational things. And I want people in middle age life. They may not have GCSEs, they may have O-levels or BTECs or diplomas, or they may not have much in the way of academic qualifications, but they may still want to go to university in the middle of their life. And I actually think, I'm afraid, tuition fees um, are very unlikely to go because if we do want more students to go to university, there is a cost that comes with that. And I think COPE, even the NUS has changed their position on this, it is probably the right way. But like Daniel, I support Lord Brown's cross-party review, uh, which is looking into this at the moment. Hi. I, I would never have gone to university had I had to pay fees, and I wouldn't have gone had there not been a system of maintenance grants. And so I saw firsthand you know, the choice uh, when I was in my late teens whether to do this or not. And with state support, I went to university and was able to build a career as a result of that. What I'm hearing from young people coming out now with several tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt is that this is causing them real difficulties in getting into the jobs market because they have the jobs market they want to get into because they're having to work quickly to earn money. This is taking people away from public sector jobs. Uh, so on, on, on average, uh, sometimes lower incomes at the entry level, and also taking them away from the third sector and doing voluntary work for charities. And a lot of charities in this country rely quite a lot on volunteers coming with skills, being able to contribute. And so there is a social cost to this that we don't often match in with the financial cost. Also bear in mind that those people going through university will tend to be higher earners later on, they will pay more taxes, and the, so the society will get its money back through that route, um, as well as through the, the building of the social capital. Um, Julian's point about cutting tuition fees, we agree with that, the Green Party, we should cut them. We agree with, we say that we should cut them now. Uh, there's a phrase that we used to use at Friends of the Earth, or you might have heard NIMBY, not in my backyard. There's another one called NIMTO, which is not in my term of office, which is what his policy is. Because the next parliament will last five years, the Lib Dem policy is to face them out in six years, so you won't be able to hold them to account on this during the next parliament. And so I think the Green Party is slightly clearer. There is one thing I, I'd agree with Julian on, in fact we agree on several things, uh, the uh, emphasis on academic educational achievement in this country I think needs to be rebalanced with a view about the wider needs of education across a wide spectrum of people who aren't academically gifted. And kids who go through our school system who come out with nothing at the end, a lot of the time they're not supported in the way that they need to be supported to keep them away from being uh, depressed, going towards drugs or drink or crime, and keeping them as properly, fully valued members of society. And I think we need to balance our emphasis on the head part of education with looking at heart and hand as well, and building rounded, nurturing rounded human beings through education. 